Welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs, your home improvement and remodeling podcast, where the two most entertaining guys discuss the do's and don'ts in home construction and in the remodeling industry. Remember that you can nail it, paint it, or just tune into the show. How about that? Uh, here are your hosts, Colin Shaw and Jimmy Driscoll. Hello, everyone. Is your microphone turned on? Yes. Are you sure? I'm on. Right? Look at me. Look at me. I'm on. Very low. Look yeah. at me. Look at me. Look at me. Well, I don't know why. But you turn your microphone on. Thank you. Here I am. <laughs> I'm on. Just little things. Just, you know, you know, 120 some odd episodes. What? There's a button for this thing? <laughs> What will they think of next? Oh, <laughs> a power oh button and everything. I didn't know there's a button. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Hello, America. <laughs> hello, America. Hello, Australia. Oh, I was going to say, uh, yeah, hello, Australia. We Thank got, you so much got, for listening. We yeah, really we appreciate got, it. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we're all over the world now. Yeah, yeah. Somebody right. on Instagram said that they love the show. They watch us. So That's awesome. Yeah, really appreciate that from Australia. Yep. I'm, so working cool. on, I'm working on Vietnam right now, actually, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah? I got a friend over in Vietnam. All right. Yeah, and he understands English. So he can... Uh, well, he, good. He'll, you know. Yeah. But they don't build anything out there. Well, he won't build anything. They, they're nothing but brick and mortar and ceramic and not much woodwork. But anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. We'll be in we Vietnam just hope they soon. Enjoy it. We just hope we'll they enjoy it. That's soon. all. Yeah. <laughs> coming, to a, coming to a country near you. Excellent. I, I know love it. it. I love it. Okay, dude. Yeah. Awesome. So big day today, big milestone. Yeah, for big us, milestone. Huh? This is gonna be the first time we're gonna take phone calls. Oh my god! I can't I'm wait just to so see. Excited. Yeah, I am. Right. Should be fun. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully people are nice. Yeah, they're gonna be nice. They <laughs> have to. So? Why we're nice to them? Why would right. we be nice to anybody else? Well, they won't get a mug if they're not. That's right. Oh, right. so if you do call in, yeah, we'll give them a mug. We use your we, we use your question. If you email us and we use your question, send your address because we will send you a beautiful. Two tone, ooh, two tone behind the studs mug, <laughs> and it's a very good mug. It's, it is. It's good. Oh my god, it's really good on coffee. Yeah, soup, soup too. Oh yeah, or well, you that's do a good Irish look. coffee, and it's just like forever. They still do that cup of soup thing. They still make that. I make my own you cup. Put of a little, soup. Like a little powder in the thing and put in boiling I'm water. I'm sure if you if they got ramen noodles, dude. Ah, uh, true. Yeah, they All got right. a cup of soup. Well, we have hot water on the cooler over here too, so. Mm-hmm. If you want to get some tea uh, or something. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> Thanks. I'm just a little, a little parched. A little parched. A little parched. All right. So I was up in Massachusetts, New Hampshire this past weekend. It is booming up there, dude. Booming. They're just they're just like us here in Connecticut. Really? Short. Yeah. Cool. Flat out working. Um, just everything is just flying off the shelves. Everything's going to the contractors first. Next, going to the homeowners. Um Homeowners are now beginning to start to get used to it, and they're they are relinquishing and they're just backing off. I've heard a couple contractors I've talked to actually yesterday that uh, the decks have been canceled by the homeowners. Really? Okay. Uh, prices too expensive. Sure. And they're just like, okay, they're giving up. They go, we'll just we'll do it next year. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully no. things will kind of get back to normal. Yeah, it's gonna get back to normal. I know. Eventually. This. Yeah. Eventually. Yep. You know. I I'm wondering. And I've already said this to my customers. I don't know if you have either. Um, also, the tariffs, um, mm-hmm. and probably because of COVID, vinyl's gone up, windows have gone mm-hmm. up, um, mm-hmm. doors have gone up, uh, yep. like 5%, 6%, yep. right? Yep. So it does make a difference in the cost. Like, I've got these poor clients. We, they're trying to hem and haw on, the, on replacement windows. It's been two years now. Yeah. And then we're ready to do it. And, you know, <laughs> and now the price went up, yeah. And now it's up again. <laughs> and now oh, just ready. To, I, I was ready to pull the trigger and order the windows for them. Yeah. The condo association changed the color of oh, the outside trim. Really? So she would, they would have eaten it because they have almond uh, windows. Yeah. And there would have been white trim. Yep. Oy, they. And where are they going? Like that terracotta, the brown? Well, yeah. Yeah, most, well, most saved of them, are. them Saved them in time. So they're going to go <sighs> back goodness. to white. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, go back to white. Wow. Caleb's with us today. He's trying to hold down the fort while we run around like crazy idiots right now trying to get this stuff together. Yeah. You know? Still um, working on the show, the, the yeah, TV show. Still working on the show. Yeah. Still coming along. Uh, we just went out to Craft and Sprout. Uh, people have already seen a couple of things on Facebook. Yeah. On the filming and stuff. Yeah, they're great people. And, of course, they've run into a glitch with a homeowner that they're working with who keeps changing their mind. Mm-hmm. You've only got so many feet and how many things you can work with because everything is – every every inch is utilized in those, in those tiny homes. homes. Yep. And she keeps on paying and changing her mind. Now, the last thing – I don't know if I told you, Caleb. 
she's going solar. She might want to go solar now. So that changes. It just changes the whole schematic of the electrical and everything else is what they're telling me. So I think they're pulling their hair out right now. Sure. Yeah. Just like it's, they're they're no different than us. No. Nope. No. Nope. Just but a different I feel medium. Bad for them because they they got to get. They're not they're not mass producing these things. They're doing them. Yeah, it, these are these are personal. These are know, personal yep. things. And that's time and money. Mm-hmm. And, they got a lot of kids, man. Yeah, they do. They do have a lot of kids. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, they got was a lot of four? kids. I think it's four kids. All boys. Stand around, there'll be another one popping out somewhere. <laughs> you got to keep moving. Oh my God. <laughs> keep moving. Don't stand still. Ken, where are you? Where's Ken? I hope he's not yeah. behind me. <laughs> uh, Wonderful so. people, though. You'll be seeing that episode this fall when it comes out on Behind the Studs on the road. I'm looking forward to it. I am, too. Yeah. Yep. This is becoming a lot of fun. We're working on uh, another one right now. We're working on Mosquito Joe. Yeah. That's coming along. Uh, more information. We're going to have some startling information on that one. Uh, startling? Can, yeah. Well, I can release right. some information on you right now. Uh, brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, because there is a tick that is year-round now. Really? Yes. It is an invasive, invasive tick. Mm. Um, it came from, of course, probably you know either Europe or... Um, India area, mm-hmm. right? Eastern Indian, um, and I forgot the name of it, but we'll be releasing that too. So there is a tick that will live through the winter. Awesome. And we got it in New England. Of course it's we It's around like a donut. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yep. All right. Great. So what are we doing? So what are we doing? Are we waiting for someone to call us? No, we got somebody already uh, ready to get transferred in. So awesome. I just thought we would catch up a little bit first before we went to the awesome. calls. Okay. Um, but we do have somebody... That is ready to talk to us. So, cool. Here we go. We're going to try this one, the first one, and then it's going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy after this. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Now, Colin is like just getting it all together now. He's working some stuff out. We're doing logistics. Yep. Meanwhile, uh, I'll play Vanna White until uh, we get going. Vanna again. I'm getting there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got the man boobs to show it. Yeah. All right. So, where are we Sick. there, Colin? Okay, so yeah, we are ready. So I think Marissa. So Marissa has been screening the calls, yeah, and then she sends them over to us here in our studio, and we have somebody getting transferred through right now. Hello, hello, this is Gabby from Virginia. Yes, this is she. Hey, hey Gabby, hey, how are you? Gabby, <laughs> good, good. Oh, I, I get you. to ask you guys a question. And yeah. you are the first caller ever on Behind the Stud, right? How exciting okay. is that? And you're going to get a mug for that. Yep. Just so oh. You know. Oh, yeah. Pretty exciting. Just to be the guinea pig or just get to yeah. ask all the questions that you don't want to ever answer anybody else. <laughs> yeah. well, Jimmy asks me questions sometimes that I want to answer. Yeah. Me. And he has to. He has no choice. <laughs> right. Right. I'm on him with a pen. <laughs> when the mic's on, I got to do it. So what's your question? Yeah. What's your question? What's going on? Well, with everybody spending more time at home and this weather is getting ready to change, we wanted to get our fireplace in working order. And we had somebody come out and give us a quote, and what was included, because the house is 100 years old and it's a wood-burning fire, was to clean it, but also we needed to retuck some brick and then add a cap. I guess we don't actually have a cap on the mm-hmm, top of our mm-hmm. chimney. Yep. And the quote came back to be about three grand, which just seemed really high. Mm-mm. Yeah, um, it's it's really not, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, it's I mean, not. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I've... I, I've you know, hired guys to do it for, uh, for, for my customers. You know, the caps alone are, you know, at least 1500 to 2000. Um, so okay. yeah, that would be, that would be about right, to be honest with you. So are you going to use it as a wood burning fireplace again, or are you guys going to gas, I mean, or? It's always been wood burning, yeah. and I was thinking just keeping it wood burning, but my nice. husband likes the idea of gas because it's like, you know, have to have the firewood and you can right. just turn it on and off. Mm-hmm. Much and easier. Smoke. Yep. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, and, and the units that they have now today, too, are just so efficient. And, you know, you can set the temperature and it works just like a regular heating source. So, and it looks really nice, too. You know, it's, but wood, wood is also very beautiful and that's very traditional. A lot of people, you know, definitely dig that. It just is a little bit more work. Yeah, Gabby, we, just before uh, you got on the air, we were just talking about materials have gone up. And that is one of the things that has happened is because, mm-hmm. um, because of COVID, um, Things have gone up five percent or six percent or even higher, so he probably would he probably put that in the price also, um, and okay. supply and demand. 
and you're lucky that you're getting it because a lot of factories have closed down and they're way behind on their materials getting them, you know, yeah. manufactured. So that may be one of the other reasons why it may feel a little bit pricey. Uh, remember, you got a really old house. So if he's going to go uh, a little bit above and beyond besides putting the sleeve in that's going to go in your chimney, um, mm-hmm. that is so important. You need to sleep well at night, not to think mm-hmm. about anything that there is no any hazard because it takes one ash to get in between that mortar, uh, get mm-hmm. into the house, and your house is a tender box. It's gone. It'll mm-hmm. just it'll be gone. It's just like fire. On, it's like gasoline on fire. So um, yeah, the pointing is very very important, and the cap and all that other stuff. You know what? You do it once, do it right, and uh, it's licensed and insured. And that's just one less thing that you're ever going to have to worry about on that house with your fireplace, you know? Yeah. So I, um, I'm, not, I'm not jumping back at the price, like going, oh, my God. Uh, that's kind of in the ballpark mm-hmm. where you, what you've got right yeah. there. So, um, with the cap being half that price, that makes sense then. Yes, yeah. Yep. Yep. How high? How, we go two, two stories? Yeah, your... about two stories. It's like a story. Well, two and a half stories actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you have a semi-finished attic, so it's pretty high up there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So that also makes sense. Good. Um, while he's out there, he <laughs> might as well just check. Uh, how old's your roof and your flashing? How old is that? Um, I know? think the roof was replaced um, by the previous owners about ten years ago. All right, so you should be okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it should be okay. So your flashing should be okay, too. You know, you, well, you would have known that already anyway if there was a problem with it. But um, I always say while you're up there, take a good look around to make sure everything is properly, you know, cocked and tarred and uh, flashed and all that good stuff. And there you go. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. I'm sure he'll definitely check that, especially, especially your, your uh, chimney flashing. Yeah. I'm sure he checked that out, too, for you. Well, Gabby, I keep... Go ahead, Cap go ahead, Because he said there would be, like, birds could actually fly in right now. Correct. Have no cap. Yes. Well, yes. we we had a fireplace guy. He got bit by a duck. <laughs> he got bit by a oh, duck. He's going in there and he got bit by yeah. a duck. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you never know what's going to get inside your chimney if, if you have no cap. And then, of course, you know, you can get some water in as well. Um, you know, if the rain's blowing a certain direction, um, you could end up with, but, you know, it goes right, right down to your fireplace. It's really not going to cause any, uh, you know, problems for you, but it's just nice to have the cap on to keep critters out and keep uh, the weather out. I got a story. Oh, boy. I got a story. You ready, Gabby? Here we go, Gap. Yeah, I'm a, Don't I be, be gross or anything, but uh, my friend Tom, Tom and Sue, they got a condo, and they went out in the basement, and it flies everywhere. Mm. Where are these flies coming from? Where are these mm. flies coming from? Yep, squirrel. Got into the chimney, oh, got into the no. and died. Uh, and died. And died in there. Because they mm-hmm. smelt, they had the stank, the stank went away, but it was a decomposed rodent mm. in the very bottom of it. So, yeah, get that cap on there. I was going to say, in, in about five seconds, she's going to hang up with us. <laughs> get that cap on. Yes, yeah. why am I talking to these idiots? Or, or <laughs> raccoons or nothing like that. You don't want nothing in there. No. You want it all going out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Good. Gosh. Thanks for giving me all the nightmares. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> We're here to help. Hey, well, let, yeah. check out the damper system too, right? You're gonna. Uh, is there a damper system they're putting in also um, on your, um, your I'd cap? I have to check the quote again, but I know that the cap could like open and shut. That's what I think you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, because you may have a. I I was working on a house about two months ago, and they had a really great one uh, near the fireplace, and it was a spring release system, and I had to go up there and I had to check it because it worked really, really well. So that's one of the things that they're including. I think that's your – you're in the ballpark. I gave you my blessing. I think, it, I think <laughs> that's about right. Yeah. Beautiful. Any other questions? Um, we were wanting to open up um, the the room between, like, the so the kitchen and dining room are connected with a swinging door currently, but we mm-hmm. wanted to maybe make it just a little bit wider and more cased, uh, like a cased opening. Okay. Um, not to completely open up concept on this historical house, but to add a little bit more of a flow. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be about a six-foot opening. Do you mm-hmm. think I need to hire a structural engineer to size that beam, or like my contractor can just do it based on what he knows? Um, your your contractor should know. 
to be honest okay. with you. Um, you know, he should be able to see it. You know, the main thing is whether or not there's a there's a, a wall on the second floor above it on that beam. Uh, if there isn't, it's definitely getting a little extra uh, mm -hmm. pressure and, and weight stress. So that may need to be considered uh, with a structural engineer. Um, and if there's, you know, decent uh, beams and uh, posts and supports down in the basement, right underneath that area, you should be in good shape as well. Because uh, you're not going from one end to the other. You're just actually adding about a foot and a half on either side probably. You know, you probably got a three-foot opening now. You go to a six-foot. Um, yeah. So you should you should be in pretty good shape, I would think. What year is the house again? 1919. So it's like 101 years old. And it is a bearing wall. I'm pretty sure it's a bearing wall. That was is that it? Yeah. It's a bearing wall. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So they it's need like, to see what's, what's going on in the basement then. So yeah, the basement. That's important. Okay. And what, yeah, what, kind of to, what kind of weights? What kind of? Yeah. Beam. It's, mm -hmm. it's sitting. And then there's um, a bearing wall in between also. Upstairs. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, that one may, you know, he would definitely need to check the, the basement and um, see what kind of supports you've got down there. You know, if you have something that's right in that area, then you, you'd be in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. um, what is, uh, what's the basement? Is it, is it dirt? Um, it, it's like a half basement, half crawl space, and that's above the crawl space area. Oh, yay. <laughs> I might want to add a couple of, uh, extra supports in the basement. Yeah. And um, I would like I would open up to see what you have actually above that. I mean, if you're gonna if you are gonna do the six feet, whether or not you're gonna add a beam to it or add a, some kind of support or add some metal, add some steel. Um, let's see what you got. And you know what? I'd take that even to the building inspector if you're gonna mm -hmm. do it anyway. Show him some pictures. See what he has to say about that. Okay. And um, if he's just and if he's kind of the clap, he doesn't really know. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of a gray area. Then you know you might want to get a structural engineer, make a okay. phone call. You know, do that and get a structural engineer in there. Um, so you get all your bases covered, right? Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Well, cool. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Ah, oh, you're great. Thank you so much for calling us. We're gonna yeah. send you a mug. Yeah, you're gonna oh, get the mug. You. You're, you're, gonna get, you're gonna get the mug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all your friends will be so jealous. But just tell them, call the show. We'd be happy to talk to them. Thanks. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Gabby. Really appreciate it. Thanks for being the first caller. Thank call. you. That's all right. Take care. Thank you guys. Bye, bye bye. All right. That was cool. That was very cool. Yeah. So we have. Who's this? Hi. Is this Lisa? Yes, it is. Lisa from Tampa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Is this Colin or Jimmy? Uh, you got Colin and Jimmy here. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Colin. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for calling. We really appreciate it. Okay. What's your question? What's going on? Well, I have kind of a general question. My husband and I are not do-it-yourselfers. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're redoing, we want to redo our bathroom. And... You know, we've gone out. We've gotten two bids. Good. Not a huge bathroom. The first bid was fifty thousand dollars. Woo! The okay. second bid. The second bid was twenty five thousand and uh, climbing. I, yeah. And I'm so I'm saying it's a bathroom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, how big is the bathroom? Well, it's probably. Rick, what do you think? How big is the bathroom? Well, the shower area is probably about uh, 12 by 8, and the other, the other room is about uh, 6 by 7. 6 by 7 and 12 by 8. It's like two separate rooms. There's a door in between. The toilet and shower in one room. The sink and vanity are in the other room. Now, did you find the... the um the estimates to be thorough, like as in broken down between materials and labor? No. Mm, that's yeah. A, that's a, yeah, that's 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 yeah. an issue. Yeah, flag that right there. Yeah, because then that's just, they're not committing to you, you know, what your budget is for, for all of the finishes, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and that obviously is, is, is one of the, the pieces of the puzzle that, that can really add up, um, you know, depending on how much you're spending for tile a square foot and, you know, I don't know what you're doing for fixtures. 
monsters, if there's body jets in the shower or anything crazy like that, or is it just pretty straightforward? It's very straightforward. Straight straight. You know, we're just retiling a shower. For yep. $25,000, yeah. we had to buy our own tile, our own toilet. Yeah. Um, you know, so it wasn't even, well, with the 25, I think it's 25 and climbing because I wanted to go back and say that probably doesn't even include sales tax. You know, and then if I make it, right. okay. it's going to go up. So, you know, I, I my question is, how do I not get ripped off? What do, what's uh, all right. Well, listen, get you're you're almost in the ballpark here because I just dealt with a, a friend of mine who went to get flooring stained and everything else, and his first quote was nine thousand, second quote was seven thousand, and his third quote was twenty six hundred. And I'm like, dude, the twenty six hundred, I'd be really leery about it. Um, I would. I would get one more quote if you could yeah, and see where they would. I think the 50000 is really, really high. It is very, very, like Colin said, it's a gray area. Um, the contractor is going to go in there and is going to do the work. If you're not really doing some major, major changes like changing a tub around, changing the draining system, if you're keeping the original draining system um, and you're not, you know, you're not jackhammering up a slab, um, that pretty much is straightforward. Like Colin said before, Depending on your buying and depending on the fixtures that you're putting into this house, you already know you have a ballpark figure from all of that in your square footage, especially if you went to Home Depot or Lowe's or even a tile company and you tell them the square footage, this is my bathroom, this is the tile I like, what, how much tile do I need? They'll give you the breakdown on what, what all that stuff's going to cost. So you'll already, have your, you'll already have your list of costs right there. What you're really going to come down to is your labor factor on your plumber, your tile man, and your carpenter. Now, the price may go up if you decide on your tub, if you decided um, if you wanted to get a glass door, those can be pretty pricey. Mm -hmm. you know. And like Colin will tell you too, there are fixtures out there that can be like, whoa, they look really, really nice, uh, but you're going to pay for them. Um, mm -hmm. So you can, you can really judge if you do your homework first, so you won't feel like you're getting ripped off. You already know. You already know what your materials cost is. Now you just really have to deal with the labor. If there's no big changes plumbing wise, that's pretty all straightforward. You'll you'll have a, that should be an honest price. You should know figure out if your guys want ninety five dollars an hour, or if you've got a a carpenter that and plumber you know a fifty dollars an hour. And um, get another quote. Yeah, definitely get another get quote. Get another quote. It, one one last question: Is this a master bath? Yeah. It is. Master bath. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I figured. So, you know, I don't know the pricing in Tampa. I do know the pricing here in Connecticut. Uh, a master bath general remodel is usually anywhere between 30 and 35, uh, and that includes materials and labor. Now, so that's a pretty standard had, price. We had a house up in New York, and we mm -hmm. converted our second floor into a master bedroom and added on a brand new bathroom. We mm -hmm. added on plumbing, we added electricity, and the contractor charged us, and he even did the downstairs bathroom at the same time, and he charged us $50,000 to do that, and that included lifting up the roof. We had a cape. We lifted oh, okay. up the roof in the back, and, and you know what? I felt like I got $50,000 worth. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yep. So that's kind of where I'm basing it now. Here in Florida, they take advantage of older people, and I'm sure. not an older person at this point, mm -hmm. you know, but there is just, it seems, that mentality. So $50,000 for a bathroom versus $50,000 for an entire master suite mm -hmm. in New York, you know, that's that's where I'm very confused. So yeah. if, I do the, if I do my third quote and I go to, and I go to Lowe's, and I priced out cabinets there, do you think that's a fair comparison? Because, of course, this guy before, he's given me the custom-made cabinet. Well, right? that's what you're paying for. That's I mean, if he's oh. giving you custom-made cabinets, there is that, can, that price can vary very much so. And there's a little homework that you can do on that. You can pick out the cabinets that you like, that you, they've got the soft clothes and the hardware. I mean, mm -hmm. there are certain things that you can get, and there are – 
there's like three different grades of cabinets, and um, you can pick the grade that you you prefer. Like you said, it's a bathroom. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're going to spend eight hours a day in the bathroom, then yeah, you know, go go high. <laughs> yeah, sure. But if you're going to go in there and get the hell out, what, you know, who cares? It's your bathroom. If, if it looks exactly. good and it's working, there you go. There you go. You know. Um, exactly. So. Yeah, I but mean, your contractor, you know, both of the ones that you've mentioned for the prices, I'm um, um, about 99% sure they don't use the box stores. They probably use, you know, plumbing supply houses and private tile stores and and that sort of thing. And, and the prices are more expensive there. Yeah, a little bit. Yes, sir. There's, there's a little bit. And but here's the great thing about it, though, when you go into a mom and pop store, you have some control on the product. If something goes wrong, they're going to back it up and they're going to fix it. And it's going to be right. Where when you go to a big store, uh, you kind of run your own. You know, it's going to take time. You know, busted this, busted that. Um, like Colin says, we kind of like to work with if if we're doing a small job. But if it's a real custom job, uh, if it's a small job, you do the Home Depot, you do the Lowe's. But like you're doing a big master room, you you know, this is this is kind of important to you. Um, I would check out the tile company, see what they have to offer. And if it's really, really outrageous, it all comes down to your gut. How do you feel about your contractor? How do you feel about these materials? Don't lose sleep over it. If you feel good about it, you may some some people like to spend a couple thousand dollars more, but they know what they're getting. They know the quality of their contractor. They know the quality of the material that's going in the house. Right. Does that help? Does that help you? Yes, it does. It absolutely does. But, good. Um, yes, I think. Uh, I, I think the third quote will do it. it will. I do too. That's gonna. That's gonna. Yeah. If he's rating between the two, then you kind of know that's what they're all charging down there, which is a lot. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm getting yeah. used to it. Florida's not cheaper. Yeah. No. I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Wow. Uh, send us an email. And let me know how things. Yeah. Go. We'd love to hear from we you. We want to hear how things are going for you. We, maybe, maybe we can do a follow up for you. We can. You know. We can update Absolutely. the listeners on what, how things are going. Yeah, you can definitely help them out. So. Right. Absolutely. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank oh, you for so listening. Welcome. We really appreciate it. Take care. Right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Very nice. Oh. Nice talking to Florida. It is. All nice. right. Oh, we got another one. We got another one. Hey, we got Steve from Madison. Is it Steve? Hey, hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good. Good. Welcome to the show. We appreciate you calling. Hey, man. Of course. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. So what's your question? What's going on? So I have a painting question for you guys. So um, obviously, like most of us, a lot of us are working at home now. Um, I'm trying to do some painting in my house, and I, I always run into the same problem, not getting paint that actually covers. So I have a really dark color in my living room. I'm trying to get something to cover because I'm going to a really light color. And it just seems like I keep getting jammed up. I go from product to product, from store to store, even talking mm -hmm. to different people. I, you know, everyone tells me what's the best. And, uh, you know, uh, I usually end up disappointed. So I was hoping you guys had some pointers. All right. Um, yeah, this is Jimmy's wheelhouse. I, I could probably help you on this one. I just recently had, well, it's it's so funny. One of the jobs I did a little while back, um, a sudden people wanted forest green, and then and then I got another job that people wanted to cover up a forest green. So it was like the le it was which one's the lesser of the two evils? But the most difficult one was trying to cover like you just had was a, a dark color. Uh, and it was actually a bedroom, um, and they were going because they wanted to sell it. And um, they already had the people who were moving in. And anyway, so to answer your question, I found a product. Um, I went out. <clears throat> I went on. The, I went on a limb a little bit to try some new stuff, and I was very pleasantly happy what I used, and it worked out really, really very well. Um, Cheryl Williams has this new product, um, and it is called. It's it's one of their higher end paints. It's called the Emerald Paint, and it. Um, it's new. It's on the market. It's like uh, it's called. I think the the designer edition, and it has a. I got it with the flat finish, and with that, I was a little skeptical about the flat finish. But they assured me now this flat finish that you use, you can clean it. Where before, back in the day, when you did flat finish on a house, when you were trying to sell it, 
you know, everybody used a flat finish, but if you nick it or if you scrape it or if you smudge it, mm. you always had to repaint it again. Yep. But with the emerald flat finish that we used, it was amazing because uh, when we had to go back and do touch-up, we actually did it in a couple of rooms, had to do the hallways. Um, they moved in, smudges, it wiped right off. I, we didn't have to, I did not have to go back and repaint it. You know, it was like a, it was like the, the footing of a chair or something like that. It hit it and just a little soap of water, boom, it came, it was fine. Wow. Uh, that was, it was fantastic. Um, so what they say, and I, I gotta, I gotta clear this up with some people because people think when they buy the can, and I used to think the same thing too, you know, they all, all of a sudden this one coat coverage thing. And it, one coat coverage right. does not exist. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is they say one coat coverage, but all right, if we get in between, if we want to read between the lines, one coat coverage really is means it's the first coat is a base coat for anything that you do, whether it, uh, this emerald, which you can use, you can use it, it, you can use it on drywall. You don't have to really prime the wall first. Uh, some people, some painters recommend it to do it. Um, but this emerald, you can put it on the wall. You can put it on drywall after it's been sanded and cleaned. And the second coat you put on, it adheres. It's got a nice thick mill to it, meaning it's, it's a thicker paint. The resins are really rich. So if you roll it on with a – I hope you're taking notes here, bud. <laughs> if you roll it on with – some people use 3 8 I prefer half-inch roller. I prefer the Purdy, the Purdy rollers, the White Doves. Mm -hmm. Those are the best in the market, uh, hands down. Um, they absorb the paint well. Um, it's very consistent when you roll it, and you will come out with an amazing finish, I'm telling you. Now, awesome. some people don't realize this, too, and I told this to customers many a time. Like, Colin and I had a customer we put when we did this forest green, and she was like, oh, my God, it's not the color that I wanted. I said, yes, it is. It's exactly the color you wanted. And it was the emerald is actually what we used. I said, you need to let it cure. It's got to cure. It was during that really yeah. humid time when we were doing yeah. it. Yeah, they, I remember. Had, they finally got the new AC running in the house. Mm -hmm. I said, let it cure. And the great thing about this was that she did not live there. She lived in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So she would have to come up back on during the week. So she'd go away. She'd see it. She was like, oh, my God. I said, don't panic. I told you this. Wait. She came back after the second coat. She was like, oh, my God. It's the color you said it was. I, I know. <laughs> so it takes a little time to paint cures. It takes paint takes time to cure, but the color that you wanted, the color you will get. And I think I feel pretty confident, Steve. If you've got a dark color on that wall, and you use this emerald, you're going to be very, very happy with it. You'll be very, very happy with it. Um, I I put my name on it. Not a problem. Does that help you? Right. That helps. I appreciate Good. the info, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. All Thanks right, for buddy. listening, man. We appreciate it. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye. See you, Steve. All right. See you, Steve. Bye. All right. So that was fun. Yeah. Got All a right. chance to talk to a few of our listeners, which yeah. was kind of cool. It was awesome. Yeah. It was super. And we just need to keep letting people know that they can call us on Tuesdays starting at 4.30. Uh, usually going to be uh, taking calls up to about at least 5. Yeah. Uh, 860 Two four eight seven eight eight three, which spells stud. Th stud. There you go. It's stud. Yeah. So. Yeah, my. Yeah. I got people. I think people. <laughs> this is no, no. funny. I got people calling me, thinking that they're going to go on the air by calling me on the phone <laughs> here. But you can't call me on my phone. No. Because I'll just put you on speakerphone next to the microphone, <laughs> and all you're going to hear is. <laughs> it ain't going to work, is it? No. It's okay. Not gonna work. So you got to call the stud phone number, which yeah. is 860-248-7883. Mm -hmm. Operators will be standing by. No calls, no way. I mean, no. <laughs> and give your give your address too if you want to get a mug. Yeah, we got mugs going out, man. They're yep. flying off the shelves here, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder if Lisa gave Marissa the, her info. If not, uh, Lisa, if you're listening again, definitely uh, call back to uh, the line or send us an email. Yeah, or send us an email or so whatever. We'll get it out to you. Yeah, give us your your address. And we'll get you a mug. You and your hubby, they each get one. Hell yeah! He you don't want to fight over he the match. No, All right. no, he All was right. mentioned. You kidding me? <laughs> hey, yeah. And then we want you to take a picture with the mug and <laughs> send it to us. 
with your robes on <laughs> in your <laughs> new tub. Please, yes, in, in the new tub, the new shower. Yeah, right. and, and you're gonna and you're gonna send the picture to the contractor who wanted to charge you fifty thousand and, and giving him the finger. Right. Get the finger. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. So yeah. So I this was an amazing show. Dude. It was. It was fun. It, it was, was fun. fun. We're gonna get used to and this. A, this yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's been a long time coming. We've been trying to figure out a way to pull this off. So this is the best we can do for what we got right now. Caleb, yeah. how do we do, buddy? Uh, we got a thumbs up from Caleb. Yeah. Do- doesn't get much better than that, does it? No, man. I mean, Siskel and Ebert could do it, but not not the way he can. He no, gives a thumbs up. Not it, the way. It, it not, means no. something. No, dude. Just yes. just don't take him out to dinner. No. No. Right. No. Because he'll all he'll have is a pine float and a napkin. You know what a pine? F- <laughs> I don't know what a pine float is. <laughs> it's a glass of water and a toothpick. <laughs> That's, That's it. I, I think I want to take him this out to dinner. Dude, it sounds cheap. He is the picky. Yeah, he's a great cheap <laughs> yeah. date. He is the pickiest eater. Really? Comes over and asks, yeah. What do you want to eat? Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Dude, a steak. Eh, I'm not a big steak either. No, really? No. <laughs> no steak? Meatloaf. Oh, hey. Come on. Beef. Uh, pizza. Little pizza. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah. I mean, he's funny. Yeah. Oh, he's funny. Huh. Funny. All right. All right, that's enough. All right, buddy. We got to go. Let's do it again next week. Again, Absolutely. everybody give us a call during the during, on Tuesdays between 430 and 5. 860-248-7883. You got it. All right. All right, buddy. I'll we'll see you next see week. Ya. Bye. Bye.